Good morning, everyone. So an easy SEO tip for you today for your marketing efforts. Today, our discussion is going to include this tip and it has to do with your website. So whether you have a brand new website or you've been practicing, let's say it, a set it and forget it method, this one's for you. Let's talk about it. Super easy to do. Um, let's go. Good morning, everyone. So let's talk about it this morning. Um, there are a variety of things that we could do for our marketing. Um, Yes, and you're catching me turning off my phone in midstream. Don't judge. <laughs> um, there are a variety of things that you can do uh, for SEO. A variety of activities are going to be included in this. It includes your on-page work that you're going to do. It's the optimizing elements uh, on the website. The off-page activities that you could do as well, which consist of optimizing external signs being collected by the data providers, um, such as your, your listings, your information, is that correct and consistent across all platforms, not just one, not just on Google, there are other search platforms. And of course your content, is it engaging? Does it contain those search terms that are top of mind to your potential uh, clients or prospects or referral partners so that they can find you effectively? The reality is that we are simply uh, pandering to the standards of the search engines. So before you guys, if you're in that thought line, yes, we are, we are. It's kind of their world a bit. And, um, and basically they've set up a certain standard for how they want us to interact with our clients and our prospects that they consider valid for how their, their business, because they're a business owner too, the way things should be run for them. At the end of the day, guys, is it such a bad thing um, that you want to ensure that your clients or referral partners come to your website and have a great experience? Um, encounter a website, your, your website is your digital face to the world after all, and we want your clients to have a great experience. So if they're offering you these tips to have a great experience, why not, right? With that said, my one simple activity that you can actually start executing very quickly if you're managing your website on your own, if you have the time to do that, if you are thinking about having a company, like why should I um, have a company, this might give you the, some food for thought. It is maintain your website, please. Maintaining your website keeps it fresh, um, updating the content information, making sure that things are working, signals to the search engines that this is a living, breathing website that someone actually cares about. If you don't care about your things, no one else will. If you don't care about your the way your business is being seen, no one else will. And come to think of it, that actually uh, is uh, an idea for our entire life. If you don't care about your stuff, why should anyone else care about your stuff more than you care about it, right? So besides the obvious, glaringly huge issue at large that is all over the news, if you're networking, you're going to hear people speaking about it quite a bit. It is your security. It ensures maintaining your website on a consistent basis ensures your site security, you know, because now once you're maintaining it, I'm assuming that you should have a checklist or the person who's doing it for you. I please, please, uh, I'm going to pray with you here. Um, not being a religious person here or, or pushing that. I'm just saying I'm begging you to get a professional to do it. We're not talking about a ton of hours. Of course, if you're in the e-commerce space where you're actively selling products, products, that's going to be a bigger maintenance um, uh, load. But if you're a uh, business services, um, it's a simpler thing for you to do 
get a professional on your side. There's a checklist that they would go over to make sure that the site is effective. So um, if you do nothing else, think about your site security and what could happen there. Um, and, you know, I mean, you don't want to lose control of your website. And I've had cases like that happen with clients where we've been having the discussion with um, site security in drips and drabs because they only come to you when things blow up, right? Oh my God, there's malware all over my website. There's this going on. The links aren't working. Don't wait until there's an emergency. An emergency costs more in time and monies, all right? Um, but if you're doing it a little bit at a time, it's way more affordable. Um, it's kind of like your insurance. You don't know if you're actually going to use it, but you know what will happen if you don't have it, right? So, all right, let's get into it. Um, it's the website. Sometimes there are mechanical gremlins that do happen. We don't, I don't know how they happen sometimes. Sometimes things just simply stop working or it maybe maybe there needs to be an update or something like that. It, there's a variety of reasons, but no one will know if you're not, you know, consistently managing it. Um, the search engines also see this, by the way. So when I'm asked, the first question is always going to be sales. When I say, you know, we're designing this website, I want to make sure that you have an effective website that makes sense for you. What are your goals? The first thing folks say is sales. Um, I, I had a client, previous client, we worked together for like seven years until the business was sold. I loved when they showed up because they said, it's about our brand image. We go out and get our sales. We don't wait for people to come and please show up and give us sales. We're still old school. We're doing a combination of it. We're getting referrals. We're going out and pitching business as well. And even calling on people cold. We're doing a variety of it. But what we're realizing is that our website is massively out of date and does not represent who we are. And with all of these fantastic sales effort that we have, folks do pick up their phone and do a research to find out who you are right afterwards. They, they do. I mean, you do it too. I, our clients are not that dissimilar from who we are as well. They do exactly the same thing. So with that said, we want to make sure that sales is not our only effort here. I really want you to think about it. Think about your bigger business plan in general. The other day, a client also said to me he wanted to be efficient. We're a small um, team. Um, and if the website could take some of the load off of us to automate things and make things easier, we would really appreciate that quite a bit. So we added some tools to it as well. So first questions you want to ask yourself, though, um, is it goal oriented? Did we have we, we develop the website? We have a reason for it. And those reasons are built in as well. Is it search friendly? Is it convenient? Is it well organized? Is it trustworthy? Ensuring, so let's talk about uh, some of the things that you could do if, if um, in order to make your website more efficient during your maintenance period um, as your, you know, these are things that your maintenance person should be doing. They're gonna do a lot of technical things that I'm not sure if we want, we need to deep dive into those things, but some of the things that you should be considering and um, having discussions on are the following. I mean, again, I, I'm, I'm having a discussion about no nonsense things here. Things that affect you as a customer and makes your experience ugh, not so great and have you bounce out of a website. What are those things that makes you just leave? You know, here goes a biggie. When the website is loading, is it fast enough? If you decide to load it onto your phone, go to the website on your phone, does it take a long time? I mean, let, let's slow down for a second. We know that usually it's only seconds, but in this new world where we're competing on seconds, those seconds matter. People have things to do, and if it's taking too long to pop up, they're off and going. Yeah, they are because you do it too. I know you do. I do it too, right? 
why would you not draw the same mindset towards maintaining your website as well and giving your clients, your referral partners, your potential clients a great experience? Because that's kind of annoying. You know what happens when you're sitting there like, what the heck, you know, your, your Wi-Fi, it's, it's not up, I'm out, right? Are they doing that to your website as well? Content. Is the content useful? You should be evaluating this on a monthly basis. Um, does my content include the search terms, the words? Um, is it included in the titles of uh, the various pages, the various things on my website to ensure that the content includes these phrases and words that are relevant to your clients is important. Now, you can do this in several ways. You can um, uh, Google Trends is a great way of searching. I like to simply drop into the search bar as well and see what Google suggests. That's the drop down that happens when you're searching. It will suggest things to you because it's looking at a cumulative, this is a cumulative effect. Everyone's been searching for that day, i.e. your clients, right? What are they interested in? That's a great one as well. We don't have to overcomplicate it. The answers are right in front of us. The other one is ensuring that it works over all devices. Now, I get this sometimes when people reach out, they want a website design or something like that. And they go, Paula, make sure that it's also mobile friendly. Yes, that's a standard now, guys. That's not a question that you need to ask anymore. I'm sorry, you don't. Um, for an older website, that's a big challenge that you guys are having right now. If your website is that old, everyone's like, ooh. When did you design this? When websites first started, you know you have a problem. But standardly on new websites, WordPress, they are um, a great across all devices. Your desktop, your pad, your mobile, um, they're, it's going to be fine. This may be a signal to those guys with older website that it's time to update because it's not really working efficiently on all the devices. How's the customer experience? That's another big one. Again, you're a customer too. We live in a consumer driven environment. When you go in, whether it's a store or you get on a website, tell me about what you like your experience to be like. And why are you so stingy with it when it comes to your own clients and your digital tools? The digital tools takes from the face to face, the brick and mortar world and assimilates that into the digital framework. What are those things that work really well? Is there a translation of it in di the digital world? So now um, let's ensure that your forms are working, your payment methods are working efficiently, or it, are they time consuming? I went on a website and there was a 20, uh, 20 question form for something that was so simple. That should have been like three questions, you know? And I was like, I'm out. I'm not doing, I don't have to, time to do a deep dive 20 questions. How about you meet me? Ask those questions that are germane to uh, converting me, you know, vetting me as your client and then moving me along to the next level and meet me. Some of those answers you kind of just want face to face or virtually face to face or actually face to face. We have options nowadays. It's wonderful, right? Ensure that your clients can easily navigate. That's another one, right? Um, are they easily finding the information that they need? Are they easily finding the information that would help them convert to becoming your client like that? Voila. Uh, there's a client that I worked with where I had to deep dive hard to find this amazing videos about what her clients had actually said about her. They were on some random page that was not accessible and easy to find. Video works. Um, why not make it make it very evident? But also, let's just break it down really quickly. Um, if this is information that could help convert your clients. We did say sales is one of those things that people are like, sales, I want the website that that's the only goal orientation I, I want to 
focus on? Let's focus on sales. Then why would you put something that would be really helpful to your sales conversion in a place where no one can find it? So really sit down and go through this process. What is my client's and customer journey looking like? Um, what's my referral partner's journey like? If they want to make a decision about using me or grabbing some information from my website to refer their clients, are these things that are easy, findable? Um, if a client wants to work with me, is the information that they need easily findable so that they can make a decision or at least move to the next level uh, wanting to get more information, right? So what is your client's journey to from um, not knowing you zero or maybe being referred to you, they're on the fence, to the buying process, to the engagement process, to the sales process, to the end? Um, what, what does that look like? Um, is your website in line with that process? So what are your call to actions? That's, a, that's another one. Are there call to actions, kind of a backup of the other one, the client experience, but are there call to actions on your website that will direct the viewer to the next step so they know exactly what to do next? I mean, we could do something quirky because I've seen it step one, step two, step three. You could do that as well. Um, you don't have to be that blatant about it. I mean, your clients may work differently one to another. Again, you've heard several of my talks, I hope, go back and watch a couple more, um, that says, don't ditto your competition. What does the What are the action items that you know for sure? When you're sitting in front of your clients, you said those phrases, those words, those things that just makes their eyes light up. You've seen it before. I've seen it. The eyebrows, they get it. They're fully engaged with you. They understand at that moment why they need to use you. What are some of those phrases? Let's uh, create call to actions for them and sprinkle them through your website. That's part of your update. Let's evaluate those and see how they're working and if they're working effectively. Update your visuals and videos if you have it. Your, um, if you're, you have big blocks of information, that's just a no-no. We're visual beings. Even the more scientific of us, even the, the most, um, uh, you know, the, the biggest readers of people like visuals. I mean, that's just how we're built. And uh, you can fight it if you want, but, you know, like, yeah, that is the research. Go on the net and find it on your own. But we're visual beings. And picture like a huge block of information when you get to someone's website on a super busy day as you're trying to make a quick, effective decision. That's why, guys, you work with a marketer, a graphics person, a customer experience person, um, so that they can take the clients through that visual journey so that things are not feeling overwhelming, time consuming. Do I have time? I don't want to do it. So, all right. Your clients are going through quickly to scan and make decisions, um, photos, uh, call to actions, videos. Um, we need to keep the eyes interested and on your site. If they're not interested, uh, they're off, right? Again, we're going through the checklist of things that should be done on a monthly basis, um, making sure that edits have been done. Backlinks are another one. Have someone check your backlinks. Are there internal and external link? Simply put, are there words that you can turn into links and link to something important and effective to explain what you're doing, whether internally or externally? That's it. Ta-da. Done. Um, how do you start this process uh, with your business? How do we start it? We just started. You can either do it yourself again if you have time carved out and you can do it yourself because you're trying to save money. Um, I always love my mom saying penny wise, pound foolish. You know, you're so busy bending over to pick up that penny in front of you that you have several dollars draining out of your back pocket. So really think about it when you decide um, that you're going to put hours because I must be a WordPress expert. 
No, you're not. You're an attorney. You're a financial person. You know, you're a restaurateur. Um, and yes, you may be trying to save monies right now, but you can also ask for less hours. You know, I can only afford two hours um, for the entire month. Is that possible? One hour. Can you just do a check in once a month for me? Ask. What's the worst thing that can be said? You know, let's try to fit that into your budget and be smart about it. Right. Because right now, security is a huge thing. And part of this monthly checkup um, is going to be important because you're you know, your person who's doing the checking, who's experienced, see these things happening, understands what's happening, understands how to fix it, as opposed to you trying to fix it yourself. So how often, if you have um, time, fine, you know my thoughts about it, or you have a dedicated person, great, um, as often as you deem necessary, then if you have, um, uh, if you're doing it yourself, or if you have a dedicated person, but at least once a month, you know, consider the search engines as one of your referral partners. Would you, as a referral partner, refer someone who did not comport themselves in a cert in the, the manner that you found becoming, right? The search engines are exactly like that. They're seeing that you set it and forget it. They've seen that you don't care. Um, it's kind of like my thought, and, and I'm going to throw LinkedIn here. I personally don't like linking to people. They don't have a background. They're, they're clearly they're incomplete on their LinkedIn page. Maybe they have a photo in. Maybe they have a photo from 20 years ago because I just saw you at a networking meeting and realized that's not where you are right now and who you are. I can't even recognize you. Those are signals to me that you don't really care about networking. Um, and I'm going to have to do push that boulder of the hill. Why bother? I'm sorry, but that's how I think when it comes to LinkedIn. Let's take that same mindset to your website and the search engines. They're seeing the same thing too. If you have a set it and forget it mindset, it reflects on you um, and your associations and what you are and may not be doing. Um, they're crawling your website so they see that you have not done anything with it and that there potentially is problems. Why would I push you further up in the ranking and recommend to folks to go to your website when I know that there are potential problems there that may become their problems, the searchers' problems, right? So, so to be considered, carry yourself well, digitally well, that is. You know, so guys, I hope this was super helpful to you today. Um, you know, listen, if you are considering marketing, you're ready for marketing, you want more information on the topic that I went over today, reach out to me, check me out at powermarketingsf.com. Um, My continued mission, as always, in, is to introduce you to everyday experts, business owners um, who can share marketing information from myself to help up level you. Um, I will also, um, uh, you know, make sure that we just kind of keep the freshest uh, information in. And it's, it's a, a information on quite a few things, things that pertain to business owners and helping you to move forward. You know, so that could be things about your business, self-development, and just you as well as a business owner. No one understands it until you start a business. They just don't. 10 at 10 airs every Thursday on LinkedIn. This is a live show. Yeah, this is me going at it live with just some bullet points and just speaking to you. Um, thank you, viewers, for continuing to amaze me. Staying strong. I see you guys when I go to networking, and I just love all of the amazing things that you do. You inspire me as well. And after all, what would life be if we had no courage to try or attempt anything, right? Vincent Van Gogh said that. So please consider that simple tip. You know, even if you don't have the budget for the huge part, the entirety of it all, just consider some of those elements and really just have someone go in and ch check on your website. Um, make the search engines realize that you, you really care about what's going on, right? So guys, as always, uh, Paula Madison series is a longer one than normal. I wanted to get all of these tips in for you because again, this is a simple 
an extremely affordable thing that you can do to boost your ranking um, uh, by, by, a, by a little bit, you know? Um, all right, guys, take care. Have a great rest of the day and thank you. Okay, bye.